God. God. <clears throat> yes, 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 no, or maybe. <clears throat> My response is always that God is a word. Yeah. Um, but I have found that in, uh, you know, working with you over the past couple of years, that I had been meditating for a long time. Mm -hmm. I had been working with attachments, sometimes deliberately, sometimes unknowingly, letting go of attachments. Uh, doing physical practice, I had a big series of openings with ayahuasca. But there was none, nonetheless a lot that was still there that I needed to let go of, that I needed to surrender in order to really begin to feel free. Mm -hmm. And that in talking with you, I started using God talk. And you didn't, you didn't instigate it, it just started coming out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. But it was in dialogue with you that I came to understand that maybe one of the reasons I was doing that was because I needed something to surrender to. And that this question about being a theist or an atheist or an agnostic is not really a question about a description of the world. Is it so that there is God or not a God? It's really a question of almost practicality, of what is it that is going to be useful for helping me let go of my attachments? And in that sense, you know, I thank God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot there, so I thought maybe we might want to talk over the kind of uses and abuses of God for mm -hmm. the enlightened life. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think we've talked about it before, but, but atheism to me um, appeared for some time to be an intellectually sophisticated, elegant approach to the problem. And there are some uh, very articulate, intelligent people who've argued con convincingly, Hitchens and uh, Sam Harris and many others. And uh, I like reading them because they're so well-reasoned. They're very clear thinkers. Um, yet at the same time, when things started to happen with me, well, I was raised a Christian, and so nominally a theist to begin with, and so you know the atheistic situation appealed, but I, didn't, I couldn't really get into the atheistic thing. And the more I looked, have looked at it, it seems to be a intellectual arrogance to believe that I have the ability to say that there is no God. Now, I can reason very well, but, but God, that means God has to be within the intellectual framework I can get my hands around. He may not be, or she may not be. Which is a very bizarre premise to traffic in, right? The idea that if, you know, there is an aspect of the cosmos which we would, we would find ourselves using the word God to describe, not, not necessarily in any kind of controlled way, we're just using that word, mm -hmm. then the idea that it would fit within our rational framework is already a kind of enormous and even irrational mm -hmm. premise. And so, um, you know, it took me as, you know, by great surprise actually, to have anything but a totally atheistic perspective. I went down to Peru, mm -hmm. a complete, I would say, and total atheist, with that kind of mm -hmm. arrogance. I overvalued my cognitive mind and thought, mm -hmm. well, I've, you know, figured out that there's nothing out there mm -hmm. but matter, and this whole idea of a God is just so much blah, 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 people mm -hmm. trying to get me to join their club or mm -hmm. feel bad about being a human being. Mm -hmm. And these things are both true. Uh, right. But what's interesting is, is that uh, as I started to develop, as, as you were saying, that it starts to become apparent that actually the position of certainty and comfort mm -hmm. belongs to the atheist. It was exactly the opposite of what I had been thinking. I thought that, well, you know, these other people need some sort of guarantee mm -hmm. because they can't face life in the present. They need some sort of metaphysical comfort that everything is going to be all right. But in fact, atheism is precisely that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it says there's nothing that's not comprehensible by human reason, and you're alive and then you die. Mm -hmm. Pretty comforting worldview if you mm -hmm. think about it. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's not very satisfying, however, to our internal experience, mm -hmm. right? My daughter the other day was just, you know, walking around and saying, you know, who, you know, how did our cells get made? <laughs> you know, she's eight years old. And I was like, well, you know, evolution, you know, like, and, and my son becomes, he's 14, he becomes enraged with some of his creationist friends, mm -hmm. right? Because they hypothesize that the world is 6,000 years old and so forth. But what's interesting is that there's very little space in there for sort of like really 
inquiring into the virtues of each position, right? You know, so the atheist virtue has the uh, position has the virtue that it's highly rational and it's fun to read, mm -hmm. and it seems convincing for a while. The theist virtue, the theist position, has the virtue that there's something bigger than me mm -hmm. to which I can surrender, mm -hmm. right? I don't have to believe that in that surrender. In fact, part of the thing that has to be surrendered is even belief. Mm -hmm. You just have to give up this pretension that you are going to figure it out. Now, ironically, this leads us to, um, you know, the uh, an, uh, you know an agnostic point of view, mm -hmm. which I think was a term first developed by uh, Coleridge, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, who visited mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. But usually, we understand. Uh, Agnosticism is being kind of like, well, I don't really know, mm -hmm. you know. But you've talked about it in a way that I think is a little bit more thoroughgoing. Well, there is, I, mean, I think there's, with, as with theism, there is, there's really a psych called naive theism, where we've told, we're told this is how the world is, and I believe in this and that, and here's the rules. And I think that that's a, something that's pretty easy to cast off intellectually. Yeah. But, but the rule. Agnosticism sits in in a place where it says, "Okay, I, I don't I don't know." It can be, "Oh, I don't know," <laughs> or it can be, "Yeah, it's impossible for me to be able to know and to grasp what it might be." And as we've talked before, you know, I found once you know, page turned for me, there was this space of there was something that was so vast, so incomprehensibly magnificent that I don't know what you want to call it. Call it Fred. But there was something there that was so huge that, you know, I don't know what word you want to pick. I mean, Einstein, you know, called it the piper. Yeah. He plays this flute in the distance that, to which we all dance. And talked about the tail of the lion. He could only see the tail, but he knew the lion was there because the tail was, was tiny, but the lion was very huge. And I think that's the, where I've come to, is there's so many serendipities and precognitions and amazing things that happen in, in my life that I can't explain by anything I could cook up or I could do. So whatever it is must be much more capable than I am intellectually. Right, so it's, uh, you know, the not knowing is actually a technique for coming to the world as it is, mm -hmm. right? If we just believe in that, what you were calling naive theism mm -hmm. way, then we go around and we just use a map and we say, oh, well, God caused that leaf to blow and God's, God created that tree and God is making me say this right now and all these things. And it, it doesn't really allow us to encounter the splendor and wonder. It actually explains away the world, the wonder of the world, just as much as that rationalist mm -hmm. framework of the atheist. Mm -hmm. But if we just say, I don't know <laughs> what all of this is. Ironically, you start to notice all of these mm -hmm. quasi-miraculous, for lack of a better mm -hmm. term, qualities that surround us mm -hmm. all the time, and we start to become aware that it was really just ourself, that our idea that we were God, which is really the right. egoic idea. Like, I don't know who, if God exists, or who God is, or what God is, but it's not I. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, that was getting in the way of this miracle. So whatever language we have to use to get our awareness, to get our sensibility to a place where we can really begin to experience that miraculous attribute without trying to put it into a framework and saying, oh, that's God, or oh, that's dark matter, or just being with the nature of reality in a way that is... Um, Kind of magnificent, mm -hmm. even in the depths. You know when it's when it's when there's deep sadness, when there's when there's tragedy, being with it without trying to know in advance, like oh, it's God's will, or it's just the rational outcome of climate change because there's so many hurricanes. Just be with it. Both of those alternatives are trying to block us from actually having the experience. Yeah, and and being somewhat comfortable with the fact that. My sense is whatever it is is so much so much beyond what my capabilities are that I have no problem surrendering to it because it is so magnificent and so much more creative and powerful than I could ever be that 
it's unlikely since we are within it. My current worldview is that we are all it, we all are within it, it permutates, permutates everything. Then you just say, well, I, I give up. I mean, I, I'll let go completely. I can never possibly know it. I can't stand outside of it and look back at it because it is all of us. I can't probably measure its intelligence because it's clearly far beyond my intelligence now. So I'm, I'm comfortable, totally comfortable with saying, look, I can't do it. I give up completely. I surrender to whatever it is, and we're just going to go with that. Ironically, though, when you do that, yeah. <laughs> when, when you really surrender to that, mm -hmm. which is much greater than us, mm -hmm. right, and you disabuse yourself even of different labels that you might use for it. Right? I think it was Meister Eckhart, the German mystic, who said, you know, dear God, deliver me from belief in you. Mm -hmm. Because it was the belief in God that was somehow getting in the right. way of the actual right. encounter God, with God. As soon as you do that, as soon as you sort of give up this pretense that there would be a self there that would know whether or not there was a God or not, mm -hmm. it's indubitable. <laughs> Now, language, you know, is imperfect, mm -hmm. you know. What I say as God may be just as well captured by cosmic evolution, mm -hmm. by saying absolutely everything has been unfolding in oneness for 13.7 billion years, mm -hmm. and you can't find the barrier between myself and it. Mm -hmm. I am that 13.7 billion year unfolding, becoming aware of itself. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's one way of experimenting with that which is much greater than us mm -hmm. that doesn't get bogged down in all of the associations we tend to have either with the presence or absence of God, mm -hmm. right? We associate the absence of God with sort of terror, the void, and so forth, even though, as we pointed out, it's quite comforting. Yeah. Well, and <laughs> next one of the big surprises is, is this total surrender thing? People say, why aren't you scared? I said, no, on the contrary, to my great amazement, it is the most comfortable place to be because you are relieved of all of your past bad things you may have thought you did, you've done, and the good things you thought you did. And you're just in this space of being lived by, I use her, yeah. as we've talked before. Uh, and this, this belief, this is just a belief now, that as we are all evolving, we clearly are all evolving, why would we believe that? God or she wasn't evolving at the same time. And if we take that as we're, this is another viewpoint from the initial creation and all the way through thing, is that she is femtosecond by femtosecond evolving. And we are her sock puppets who are experiencing evolution as she tries to evolve herself through each one of us as we adaptively change as experiments change. And again, you use the term experiment. It's a beautiful experiment to oh, engage. Yes, yes. Can I can I feel myself as an experimental attempt at knowing what it's like mm -hmm. to be me mm -hmm. in the cosmos mm -hmm. by cosmos? Right. And again, requires no belief. Just as surrender right. actually requires no belief. Right. If we'll surrender to that and see how it feels to practice this idea that we are a way for the cosmos to begin to, to evolve itself. Mm -hmm. It has a very different feel from either the presence mm -hmm. of God in the usual sense or the absence of God in the usual sense. And it's instead this like beautiful dance that has the added benefit it, that we're a part of it. Yeah. And we are it. Key part of it. Yeah. yeah.